who can be quite critical of the president on other occasions, said this was an attack on America and that no partisan argument or scandal would prevent the country from uniting to track down the people who have done this and make them pay. All right, Sam Donaldson at the White House, thanks very much. The State Department is warning Americans against travel to either Kenya or Tanzania. Americans already there have been urged to exercise caution and leave the countries if they deem it appropriate. This is certainly not the first time Americans have been targeted overseas, and in just a moment, we'll take a closer look at the threat to Americans abroad. I've just got this burning love for food. <laughs> but sometimes it just doesn't love me back. Heartburn surging up to here. What my doctor calls acid reflux. When I get it, he says, get Gaviscon. Only regular Gaviscon forms a soothing protective barrier to help keep stomach acid down where it belongs. Mylanta can't, Pepsid AC can't. Only Gaviscon can. So my heartburn doesn't come back to burn me. Gaviscon, it helps keep acid down where it belongs. Both these men have athlete's foot. But only one used Desinex, the soothing cure. Desinex has a dual action formula that calms the itching and cools the burning. And Desinex is clinically proven to kill the fungus dead. So your feet feel good while they heal. Got athlete's foot? Get dual action Desinex. Soothes while it cures. Evidence. The leading regular toothpastes, even the leading regular peroxide baking soda brand, leave plaque on your teeth. They can be too coarse to penetrate microscopic crevices where plaque and deep stain collect. New evidence. Arm & Hammer Dental Care, the only formula with a high level of baking soda, is better at cleaning plaque away. It dissolves so fine it penetrates crevices where deep stain builds. Teeth are clean and white every day. Arm & Hammer. Evidence. Plaque clean, white clean. <laughs> Is rising. See it shine, shine. Looks like a great day. See it it's a great day for the comfort and convenience of changing tint transitions lenses. Indoors, they lighten. Outdoors, they darken. So lightweight plastic transitions lenses are right in any light. Make the change to transitions lenses and see for yourself. It's a great day. Transitions lenses, right in any light and right for you. We're going to take a closer look tonight at the threat to Americans overseas. Not including the blast today, there have been about 7,200 international terrorist incidents directed against the U.S. over the last 15 years, and more than 620 Americans have been killed. Americans are vulnerable targets. ABC's John Martin reports. It has been nearly 15 years since three massive explosions, all in Lebanon, blew away the illusion that Americans are safe overseas. In 1983, Beirut, a car bomb at the U.S. Embassy kills 63 people, wounds more than a thousand. Six months later, a truck drives past guards and blows up U.S. Marine headquarters, killing 241 people. Eleven months later, a van slips past the security gate at the U.S. Embassy annex, killing 23, wounding 71. Soon, Congress approves a five-year plan to spend $2.1 billion to upgrade security. A commission headed by Bobby Inman, former National Security Agency director, urges safeguards, keep traffic 100 feet from buildings, install barriers, electronic locks, steel doors, security cameras, and, most expensive, move embassies out of central cities. But then, two years ago, terrorists bomb U.S. military housing in Saudi Arabia. Nineteen die. Five hundred are wounded. Our blunder is a financial blunder. Ivan Selin led the State Department security effort during the Bush administration. Uh, we spent most of the money on half a dozen model fortress embassies, which were enormously expensive, and have left ourselves in rented buildings and downtown buildings with no standoff, no protection. Even so, says an Israeli expert, there was no excuse for what happened today. But the car bomb in which you have seen repeatedly cases of car bombs, this is a blunder. If these blunders are to be corrected, say experts, three things must happen. Agencies must share intelligence. Diplomats and commanders must be held responsible. And the United States must find a way to make terrorists fear they will be caught and prosecuted. John Martin, ABC News, Washington. 
What makes an embassy such an inviting target? Can anything be done to prevent these attacks? We talk today to Greg Bujak. He's the former director of diplomatic security for the State Department. Until recently, he was in charge of the security at U.S. embassies around the world. Mr. Bujak, we like to think of our embassies as safe havens around the world. How could two be so severely attacked? Embassies are not fortresses. Embassies are public places. And of course, you do your best to protect them depending upon what the threat environment is. But in this particular case, I would not have guessed that these two embassies would have been targeted. Why not? Just simply because the embassies themselves, when we were uh, assessing threats in the past, uh, and when we were using intelligence, didn't seem to have indigenous groups that would be threatening to them. Uh, they wouldn't particularly be close enough to activities that would be particularly threatening. So when we look at security at our embassies around the world, in effect, we rank them most dangerous down to perhaps most secure? In fact, uh, there is a list of, that comes out all the time, regular list that comes out, in which the threat levels are adjusted depending upon the intelligence information and other factors. The more threat, the more protection. But on that list, do you have any sense where Tanzania and Kenya last rank? Uh, I think uh, midway or down to the, toward the bottom, I would guess. As most secure? As, as ones that were not threatened. Would that mean that they would have been less fortified? That's correct. There would have been less uh, bollards in place. There would have been less uh, uh, distance between the sidewalks. We always try to put as much distance from the embassy buildings as possible from where you have public access. That then means that the effects of a bomb that take place as far away as, say, 100 or 200 feet will be much less on the building itself. In this particular case, it would appear to me is that both of the bombs were able to get pretty close to the buildings. And because they were lower threat embassies, we wouldn't have pushed for the closure of streets or we wouldn't have changed the embassies themselves because uh, we thought they didn't have the, the, the likelihood of a bombing. Mr. Bujak, bottom line, is there any way that we can make our embassies entirely safe? No, I think when you look at the types of threats that we've faced with around the world, uh, we don't want to spend, or nor could we spend, the amount of money it would take to replace the number of embassies that we have around the world. And uh, as we, we've seen in recent days, unfortunately, uh, we had this sad incident at the Capitol. And if someone tries hard enough and wants to circumvent the measures you put in place, there isn't any place that's impenetrable. Greg Bujak, who, as I said until recently, was in charge of security at U.S. embassies around the world. There will be much more on the bombings later this evening on 2020 and Nightline.